It's probably going to ask you to OK there. Um, but welcome, everybody, to our Writing Lyrics to Melody workshop. Um, I'm Chad Shank, for those of you who might be new. So I started at-home songwriting uh, in the fall of two, uh, 2021. So it's going on two years that we've been doing meetups. And then I also have my YouTube channel, athomesongwriting.com. This is a, a workshop tonight that's really focused on a skill that you can use in your own songwriting. And this is really going to be focused on uh writing lyrics to a melody that already exists so Jeanette I know you said that you're coming up with a lot of melodies and things so this will probably be helpful for you to to know how to put that all together um and we're gonna go through a few different things tonight so let me share my screen so what we're gonna do first is I thought we could listen to a couple of number one songs that are number one right now. And I know that not everybody's goal is to write number one songs or write awesome. um, songs, but I think it's good to listen to to music that is kind of resonating with people just to get a sense of what's the state of, of what's out there and and who knows, it might give you some new ideas. So we'll listen to a couple of, of songs that are number one this week. Um, we're also gonna talk about music stress which is different than work stress, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> we're also gonna talk about lyrical stress, and then we're gonna do some practice of writing lyrics to some melodies, and then whatever time we have left, we'll open for discussion and all of that. So um, I think it'll be a fun night. Um, awesome. So the, the, first, the first thing we're gonna do, or the first song we're gonna listen to is a hot um, AC song. It's the number one song. Uh, Miley Cyrus is the artist. But the song itself was written by Gregory Alde Hine, Michael Ross Pollock, and then Miley Cyrus was a co-writer as well. Um, but this is a song called Flowers. So I thought we could just listen and maybe have a few comments afterward on just kind of what are some of the things that you picked up on as you're listening? So this is Flowers. Are you, are you speaking? Because I can't hear you. There we go. Now can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Zoom locked up. I couldn't stop the screen share and weird. Sorry, everybody. So what did you think of, of that song? Wow. Love that. Yeah. What, uh, what, nice. wow, what was wow for you, Leslie? Um, the lyrics. Cool. Yeah, yeah and the message. Awesome. Yeah, and and since I buy flowers with every uh, every time I get groceries, uh, I could really <laughs> relate. <laughs> I'm single. Uh, <laughs> she doesn't need anybody. She's basically saying, "I don't need you." Yeah, she's saying she can <laughs> do it all herself. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. And which isn't true, but that's okay. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> it was still kind of kind kind of good. <laughs> yeah. Jen in the chat says she really likes it. The rhythm got her. Um, JP says she's incredible. Um, thought the post chorus was catchier than the actual chorus. Yeah, I actually kind of agree with you, JP. The love me better part, I can love me better. I can love me better. That adds that extra hook. Um, and Jay says it sampled something familiar. Um, yes, yeah, so it is an interpolation of Bruno Mars. Um, uh when i was your man i think is the name of the song um so parts of the melody were actually taken from from that song so it does sound familiar to some people which is interesting um cj were you gonna say something oh uh, i mean i'm underwhelmed i <laughs> um <laughs> underwhelmed. By it. yeah I, it's disco to me it's a disco with the popping bass and the lyrics are not great. I love the simple idea of it. The simple idea is great, but I mean, I've heard that a billion times. I can, you know, that I can, I can do my own thing and I don't need you. I mean, my God, Ariana Grande has better songs than that. Yeah. But, and so, and so does Selena, in my opinion, you know, about the same kind of sort of thing. Um, yeah, I'm kind of underwhelmed. I like the disco -y feel. It's a retro kind of thing, the popping bass and, and uh line and the you know the super four on the floor kind of like disco -y beat and but yeah i'm like 
I don't get it really. I, <laughs> I, I don't get the sense that, I mean, I know women are like, there's like a whole movement around this song and I'm like, yeah, I, I think that, I think the idea is, I think that what I think is great about it is that it's a very simple idea and it's simply stated. Yeah. And I think, I think that's what you need to like appeal to the masses, right? Like mm -hmm. it's kind of like a hit song is the Walmart of songs. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like hit songs are kind of simple like that because you have to appeal to so many different people. I think if you get too complex, you start to, your, your audience starts to shrink, which is totally fine. Do you know what I mean? But I think it's been that way for a long time. I mean, like look at some of the hit songs in the past, you know, like, um, like I'm trying to think of just funny saying songs, you know, like, even sort of like La Bamba or, um, uh, gosh, what is the song I'm thinking of? Like the, the do Ron Ron song, you know what I mean? Like those things are so, so easy or don't worry, be happy. Yes. Yeah, super simple. Um, Christine said she likes it, remembers the, the repetition. Um, Leslie AC stands for adult contemporary. Um, so that's the number one song on the adults contemporary chart. Uh, Dan, you had your hand raised. Uh, hi. Um, I, I found myself really surprised by the quality of the lyric in the chorus. I, I have not paid any attention to Miley Ray Cyrus, zero. And, <laughs> and I don't know who Gregory Aldi Hine and Michael Ross Pollock are. Um, yeah. But, I, but this is much more formal and traditional than I would ever have expected. Um, you know, it's it's almost a kind of, um, you know, is this Burt Bacharach? I don't know, probably not, but it's it's got that kind of classic feel to me. Um, and then the yeah. last line of it surprises me again, I, because I think it's better than the rest of the chorus. It sort of sneaks up on me. Um, awesome. I didn't like I didn't like the lead into the chorus where it where it's um, and then remember I um, I think is the lyric, which is not really very conversational. But yeah. on the whole, I, I liked it a lot more than I thought I would. Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks, Dan. Uh, Christine, you had your hand raised. Yes, you, you, I remember what you said. You said that pop turns into country. And this, to me, is pop turning into country, especially with her, fa her father, it's Billy Ray. So there we go. Yeah, totally. Um, so I have one more song for us to listen to. This time we are going to go to the country genre. Um, let me make sure Zoom is going to cooperate with me again here. Zoom did an update last week, and ever since then it has been goofy again. OK. Here we go. So this one is the current number one song in the country genre. And this is a song that is by um, Bailey Zimmerman, who is the artist, Heath Warren, Jacob Hackworth, and then Jet Black, which I thought was kind of a cool name for a songwriter. Um, but this is Rock in a Hard Place. Something about a ring, and then there was something, and then he says, just for the record, you know, I'd rather I'd rather try to keep this thing going because it takes a lot of energy to to, to throw in the towel. And then he says, "And well, he's walking out the door. So which is it, folks?" <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm just like, I'm not a person who really gets inside lyrics and tries to make sense of them. But if you're a country writer, you should not be writing like that, in my opinion. You really need to be setting it out because like, that's very, it's a very high bar, you know. And yeah. I love his performance and I love the energy behind it. I love the melody. And I think that's what carries the song because I think most people just let it fly by. Yeah. And what I think is interesting about all of this and like everybody's opinion is so valuable and like you, you like what you like and you hear it how you hear it. And what I love about that is it, the, so the song is number one, right? So something works about it. And the fact that all of us have different opinions just tells you that if you bring your song that you really believe in to a song review and somebody gives you feedback that you don't like, it doesn't mean you have to change your song. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because thank you. Yeah. yeah. So you have to. Yeah, you just you're never going to please everybody, which is which is fun. But Christine, what did you think? Uh, what I thought was this. 
uh, that, that always I've noticed in country music, they sing about real situations and they make their song. I know it's this, the title of your, uh, of your class tonight is about melodies, but they make their songs fit. And I always enjoy their songs now more than I ever did because they have real life situations and they, they talk about it. Uh, sometimes in pop music, they don't do that. So I think they sometimes take or maybe a riff from pop music and build it into a song. But I really, I enjoyed this. Uh, yeah, he did change some things, but how many people don't change things? So, and you're yeah. right about the review. That does give me encouragement. So. Yeah, no, that's great insight, Christine. That's an awesome observation. Thank you. Uh, Jeanette. Yeah, the thing that stood out about it is the fact that there was your meter, like what Christine said earlier about how they're really good with fitting the, ly the lyrics into the melody. And another thing that stood out to me was how there was like major and minor key changes I kind of wasn't paying attention to the story. And I know country music is notorious for like telling a good story, but I, but even if that didn't grab my attention, it was definitely those two things that grabbed my attention. But I was really impressed with da 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 da. It just he made he made those lyrics dance, if that makes any sense at all. Yeah. Yeah. Like made yeah. your ear pop yeah. Yeah. and go, oh, okay, it's still gonna help. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I think that's a great thing to remember, too, is different listeners, like you said, you weren't listening to the story as much. You were caught on the melody, and I think that's why, like, melody and lyrics have to work together. They have to work together, right? Like, I think you can't necessarily neglect one over the other because you never know how your listener is experiencing it. Um, J-Rock. Yeah, I'm actually going to piggyback on what Jeanette said, because I was listening to the melody. Um, you know, I, I I hear the lyrics and the message, but the they, I, I agree uh, with other sentiments that they're really simple messages, honestly, like, they're you know, it's stuff that's been said before. But um, the melodies on both of these songs, like, you know, the, the um, Miley Cyrus song, it and this last country song, they have a sway to them. Uh, that's what I was feeling was that sway, the the cool. way that it makes your body move. <laughs> so that's and they fit the lyrics to that sway and they'll go off of that sway. You know, it's with the with the beat uh, and the the meter, like Jeanette was saying. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Cool. Anybody else have any thoughts or anything before we move on? All right, so let's go and jump to the next section. So how does what we're going to talk about tonight apply to your songwriting? So what we're talking about now is we're going to talk about writing lyrics to melody. So writing lyrics to melody applies to your writing. A lot of times it's if you finish writing a verse, a lot of times you have lyrics and a melody created or crafted already. So let's say you write a first verse, you kind of know how it goes. And then your job is to create a second verse. Many times you're trying to create lyrics that fit the melody that you just created. So what we're talking about tonight applies in that situation. Um, when you write the other verses, you know, that's where the additional lyrics come come or are brought to. Um, so knowing how to effectively set lyrics to an existing melody is an important skill that sometimes takes some practice and it does take some some time to work on it. Um, there's really no right or wrong way to do it, but there's, I think, more effective ways to do it when we're talking about lyrical stress and musical stress, which we'll get into. And I know a lot of times when we talk about some of these, these things, um, in these workshops, people will ask, you know, do songwriters really pay attention to this? And the answer is yes, because really what separates an amateur sounding song and a professional sounding song is how the lyrics and the melody are meshed together. Just like what all of you were saying about these two songs, you all just kind of said everything kind of worked together. Like it was all just one thing and it was one work of art. Um, 
And setting lyrics to melody in odd ways can turn off your listeners, which we've talked about before. And then sometimes you may also start writing with a melody and you'll need to know how to add lyrics to the existing melody as well. So now let's talk about musical stress and what creates musical stress. And this isn't the stress that you feel writing a song. <laughs> this is actually stress in the music. So musical stress is created by where a note or a phrase falls in the measure. So we've talked about this in other workshops as well, where there are strong beats and there's weak beats within each bar. And we're going to also talk about how there's strong bars and weak bars as well. So where your phrase falls within the bars or within the measures really can have an impact on how it's stressed musically. The downbeat is the strongest beat in every measure, and that's the same in any time signature, whether it's 4-4, four, 6-8, four, 3-4. The downbeat is the one, so that's the strongest beat in each measure. Odd number beats in 4-4 four, four time are stronger than even. So your one and your three are stronger beats than the two and the four. And musical stress when it comes to melody is not created by the pitch of the note. So some people think that you add musical stress by increasing the pitch or that it's affected by the pitch, but musical stress is actually not created by the pitch. It's and it's not created either by the length of the note. So longer notes do not have any more musical stress than shorter notes. It all depends on where they fall in the measure. So the order of the beats from strongest to weakest in 4-4 four, four are 1, 3, 2, and then 4. So that's strong to weak. This would apply to all levels. So if this was eighth notes, that would be the same uh, as four eighth notes, four sixteenth notes, and on and on. Also, like I mentioned, odd number measures or bars are strong, and even number of bars are a little bit weaker than the odd bars. So if you look at this, knowing what we had just said, and some of you may not be familiar with reading music, but which two notes out of these, and I'll play the what this sounds like as well, but which two notes are the strongest notes in this melody? Whoops. So play it here. Does anybody want to take a, a guess or a shot at um, which notes might be the the strongest here? Somebody says C and F, C and G. So when you're saying C, you'd be this one, and then G is this, then F. Jeanette says G. Or if you just want to point out, if you don't know the notes on the scale, um, you can also just kind of point out which which ones you think are the strongest. Anybody else have thoughts? Awesome. So J said C and F. So that is correct. So if you're looking at... Um, Oh, Adam says he only said G because it appears twice. So we mentioned strong bar, weak bar first, right? So strong bar, so it's strong, weak, strong, weak. So notes like this note on the one of this bar is stronger than the note of this bar. Even though it's a longer note and a higher note, this note or this note is stronger than this one. So the two strongest notes within these are the C and the F. So those would be the notes that have the most accent on them 
within this this motif even though they're not the highest and one is pretty short and one is a little bit longer those have the most accent on them so if you listen to it again you may be able to kind of hear a little bit what that what that means And don't worry if this isn't quite making sense yet. We'll do a few more exercises that kind of show you this. But these two notes are starting on the one. So those are strong. And it's a strong bar and the strongest bar. So those are the strongest two. So now we talked about musical stress. What about lyrical stress? Well, lyrical stress is something that we talked about in other workshops as well. But this is where we're talking about stressed and unstressed syllables. So lyrical stresses come from the natural shape of the language. So that means the just the way that we accent words when we speak them. So we we actually more sing to each other than we do talk to each other because we understand language in small little chunks. And those small little chunks come from accented and un unaccented syllables, almost like memorizing a phone number. So the way we hear language comes from the combination of stressed and unstressed syllables. Um, and that's why if you hear a language that you don't understand, it sounds like they speak fast because we're not familiar with the rhythm. So we, we don't know what's stressed, what's not stressed. So we don't know what our words, we don't know what our phrase is. So it all sounds like one thing that that runs together. And you can think of the shape of the language as how we pronounce words. So again, strong and weak syllables. Single syllable words like nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs, they will have one stressed syllable. So those are stressed words. Multi-syllable words will have stressed and unstressed patterns. So you'll have some syllables that are stressed, some that are unstressed. And words that are articles like the, and, but, or, prepositions, pronouns, conjunctions, usually those are not stressed, which we've talked about in past workshops as well. And then also words that are not usually stressed are verbs that come from the, the version of be. So like were, am, was, is, are. Those are, even though they're verbs, they're not necessarily stressed all the time in the way that we speak. So your mission as a songwriter is really to try to preserve the natural shape of the language as much as possible, because the more you maintain that natural shape, the more your listener will believe what you're saying. Because if you miss set lyrics where you're putting the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable, it makes it sound odd to the listener's ear, right? And I think if you listen to songs in some of the review meetings, you'll start to hear when something just doesn't quite phrase correctly. And a lot of times it has to do with how they're setting the syllables. So which stress pattern is correct for, for this word? Is it multiply or multiply? What do you think is the correct way to stress this word? J Rock says B. Yep. J says B. Neil says B. Jen says B. Yeah, so multiply B is correct. That's the way that we usually pronounce the word. So it's stressed, unstressed and then a weaker stress, but it's still stressed. Um, so if you sang the song multiply instead of multiply, that could be enough to make your listener kind of be like, mm, I don't believe what you're saying. And it will sound forced with the melody. I think somebody said one of those songs we listened to tonight sounded a little bit forced and that this can be part of the reason why you get that experience. Um, Pierre, you had your hand raised. 
Now, do accents come in there? Like, if we're not talking the country, kind of a twang, would that not affect the way certain words are, like, multiply, you know, stuff like that? <laughs> you know what I mean, not to exaggerate, but you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. If you hear that in a country genre, you'd say, well, I'm a good old boy. That's the way we speak around here. I don't know about you proper folks, but you know what I mean? So it, it, that could play a little something on those the, the appeal of country songs, right? Yes. So the goal is really to be conscious of it so you you would set it the way that it makes sense for the way that someone would say it right so there are times where you may do it quote unquote incorrect because because of those reasons um and the other thing is is some other countries um may stress words differently too you know what I mean? So it kind of depends on where you're at a little bit. Um, most, I, I shouldn't even say most, I should say that if if you're in the U.S., you'll hear things that are like set the way that people in the U.S. would say it. I think if you're in like the U.K., you'll probably hear it the way that they do it. Um, again, it, there's no real like right or wrong. It's not like correct and incorrect. It's more like what is the most effective way to do it? But that's a great question, Pierre. Awesome. Uh, CJ. Oh, you're on mute. I think you already answered. I mean, but I don't have a problem with words that are, I know Adam does. <laughs> and I think, <laughs> and I know you do too. You, you just said that one word drove you nuts. But I don't have a, I, I think that because of, you know, hip hop, and the popular lexicon has, you know, seeped into every genre of music. It doesn't bother me, but I do respect the fact that, you know, um, you got to know what's right to bend it. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's, yeah. that's the most important thing is know the rule and then or know, know what's going to reach your audience. And then and then when you're really good, you can play with that not, and exactly. not, have to yes. do it, not have to do it that way. Yeah. So I think it's more of being aware of, of, you know, if you're singing something and you're like, this just doesn't sing right. Maybe you're yeah. accenting the wrong syllable, you know? Right. Right. No, but that's great. Thanks, CJ. Mm -hmm. So if you, and just kind of, if you accent the unstressed syllables sometimes, and likely it'll sound forced and it can sound insincere. Obviously there are songs like uh -huh. CJ said, there's hip hop songs that, it's it's done sometimes for effect but i think like you said cj it's like the people who are doing it know they're doing it i think unfortunately yeah. sometimes we do it and we don't realize we're doing it and that's when it sounds weird yeah also accenting words can actually change the meaning of what you're trying to say so if you accent certain words within your melody it can actually change what you're saying so think about and maybe put in the chat what some of these would mean to you. Like if, if I say, look at me, you know, look at me. That kind of sounds like I'm saying, look at me, don't like listen to me. Like it's almost comparing look to something else, right? Look at me. Don't, don't listen to me or don't like whatever. But then if you say, look at me, right? If you accent the at, that has a different meaning than the first one, right? Yeah. Like, look at me, don't look away from me, is kind of what that sounds like to me. And then if you say, look at me, that means don't look at anybody else, look at me, right? So the meaning changes depending on how you set that line within your measure. And I think that's something that can make a big difference. Um, when you when you start to really get into setting lyric to melody too. Uh, JRX says, look at me getting attention. I have something important to say. Yeah, exactly. And that has a different different connotation than look at me. It it becomes a comparison of don't look away, look at me. So I thought this was kind of cool. And this is a neat way to experiment with ideas, like especially if you have a title, try accenting each word that's in your title and see what ideas that brings up for you. And 
you could also use that as a way to maybe write different verses too. You could you could have it be like maybe the song's called Look at Me. Maybe the first verse is this setting, second verse is this setting, and then you know the the bridge or the third verse might be in this setting. So you could advance that concept even with the same words. So really what we're talking about when we talk about structure and when we talk about like setting lyric to melody, we're really talking about the body language of the words, right? You know, a lot of times you'll hear people say, it's not about what someone says, it's how they say it. And that's kind of what happens within the structure of songs. It's not so much what the words are, it's how they're delivered that makes a difference. So the goal of, of, a, of a songwriter, oh, uh, CJ. Oh, you're on mute again. I'm sorry, I keep getting kicked off and I hope it's not too disrupting for you to keep letting me back in. No, it's okay, it's fine. Oh, okay. I wanted to say that, you know, there are some show, TV shows that I watch where people don't put the emphasis on the right part of this. Like somebody will say, um, you know, yeah, Joe went down there. Uh, Joe, Joe went down to the club and then somebody else will say, Joe went down to the club or you know, something that's not right. It's, it's almost like you have you read the script and you can tell immediately and it pulls you right out of it. So, yeah, I totally agree with the emphasis on the particular phrase being super important, like where the, where the emphasis is in the, in the phrase. Exactly. I mean, I think it's the same concept of, of acting and setting, you know, words to, to a melody for sure. Mm -hmm. So, so the goal of a songwriter is really to combine lyrics and music to communicate emotions and ideas in the most effective way possible to give the listeners an emotional experience. And I think that is not an easy thing to do, right? Like I think really knowing how to write really good songs and songs that you really have that connect with people that's that's not an easy task so if you if you're feeling frustrated sometimes about doing some of these things you're you're not alone and writing really good songs is hard but the goal is to try to mix all of these things together to give your listener an emotional experience so now let's get into some of the writing exercises and i think this will be fun so Basically how this is gonna work is I am going to play you some melodies and you are all going to write some lyrics to the melodies. So they are pretty simple. There's not a lot of notes. Um, I'll play them over and over again for a little while so you can get the, the melody in your head. And then what I'd like to do is take a look at how do your melody or how do your lyrics set to the melody? And I think this will be a fun, fun little exercise. So the first one is to write a lyric to this line. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six notes. So I'm gonna play this a few times. So, and you can write whatever lyrics come to mind as you are hearing this. And then we'll come back and then we'll, we'll see how, how some of these are set. Um, and you can put your your lyrics into the chat. That might be a an easy way to do it. So this is the the melody. That's one time.
Rewinder here. All right, does anybody need more time or are we are we good? Perfect. So let's start looking at the the chat here. Um so the strongest note in this me melody is the first bar, right? We talked about the first beat, the downbeat of bar 1 is the strongest. This would be the second most st strong, and then this note is strong again. So let's look at what Jay wrote. So he says, I want to see your smile. So see your smile is, is strong, but you notice how Jay is accenting a pronoun on this, on this beat. So Jay, that first beat, as we had mentioned, pronouns usually are not a stressed word. So what you're saying isn't wrong, Jay, but I think if you're if if you have a strong beat, is I the word that you want to have that that stress used on, right? So you don't want to waste the stress is kind of the the thinking. So starting on that pronoun may not be the 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 strongest word um but again it's not wrong but it, it just having a stronger word might be a little bit better in that situation but see you smile those you're you're accenting a verb and a noun so that's great so awesome jay thanks for sharing that um thomas kind of has the the same thing going on as jay does that first beat you're doing, a, I think there is what, a preposition, if I remember correctly. You have to correct me on the parts of the speech. But there is a word that doesn't hold much meaning in, in a lyric. So there goes my heart again. So that, this part again is, is great, but this strength of this beat, having it be there, might not be the strongest word to have in that location, if that makes sense. But again, not wrong, just maybe not as strong. I see Umar kind of did the, the same thing. There's no more cheese this time. Cheese is very important. So yes, cheese this time, cheese and time are, um, but theirs, again, doesn't really say much. Uh, Jeanette, yours was then, there was you right there so your accent almost your whole line doesn't have much meaning to it right so technically it's set correctly but it doesn't really it's not accenting very strong words right so that might be something you could you could look at but great great uh a work again it's not it's not wrong but it, it could be a little bit stronger don't want to hear you cry so that's a little bit stronger uh jen um so don't is kind of that verb uh conjunction um where it's it's don't want to hear you cry 
So yeah, so hear is a good word and cry is a strong word. Um, Adam, that's where I draw the line. So that isn't a very strong word to start your, your measure with. So you might want to look at that too. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Shelly, you have more syllables. You would have, I don't know. I don't know why you cry. So you're starting on a pronoun. So that's kind of a weak syllable there too. And then Jen has another one here. Clean up this mess again. So that has a strong word. That starts with a verb. So it's clean mess again. So it it's stronger than I want, like, let's go back to then, then you hear, right? For Jeanette's, then you hear. That doesn't make quite as much sense as clean mess again, right? So you can see that there's meaning words that that show up on the um on the power notes. Christine's is come sit uh come sit down with me. Are you adding two syllables? Come sit it down with me. I think you're missing a syllable, but okay. um <clears throat> come come is kind of a that's a verb. So yeah, you're starting on an accented word. Come sit down. Down. Yes. 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 Mm-hmm. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty strong there as well. I think you're just missing one note. Okay. Thank you. Um, so Pierre, you have snow is melting. Oh yeah. So you're accenting the the ting. Snow is melting. Oh yeah. So there's an example. <laughs> Pierre, I know you're a good sport. <laughs> so, but there's there's an example of like when you look at your own songs, like that's where you kind of pay attention to what am I what am I actually putting on those strong beats, right? And I know some of you like here here's the secret. I can't read music. So like these notes on here don't really mean anything to me. I just played this and then the computer did this. So I do everything by ear like a lot of you do. So you just have to listen to where those those strong beats are. So let's let's listen to how um, with the music. Let's listen to how Pierre's would would sing. Is melting again. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's oh, yeah. Snow is melting. <laughs> so yeah, maybe you have have a bell on there, Pierre, and that that would make it fun. Snow is melting. <laughs> um, that's a that's a great example. Um, Suzanne has oh what a thing to do. So oh, that's kind of what you would call a vocable, where it's kind of like a a. It's a syllable that's kind of a word, but it's not really a word. So like you do see that in songs where it can be very powerful, like oh-ohs or oo-oos or ah-ahs. So those are a little bit different. So oh, what a thing to do. So that's where you have what a, not as strong as thing to do. So that's a good setting, Suzanne, great. Um, J-Rock has chill out at home with you perfect yep so do you guys see how that that line fits with the strong beats so that's that's great j-rock um so dan you have i see your face in dreams or you're always there for me so you're starting with pronouns so you might be able to have a stronger word um so you could have it maybe of dream of your face at night would be stronger than I see your face in dreams, just based on um, how the how it's set. Uh, JB has gone, baby, gone. Uh, gone, baby, gone, baby. Gone, baby, gone, baby. 
Yeah, gone. Those would be on the. Gone, baby, gone, baby, baby, baby. I think the stress on baby is goofy on the second one because I don't think we pronounce it baby, <laughs> right? Some people might. Hey, baby, you know. Um, Dale has light breaking through. Light breaking through, da da. I think you have extra syllables there. But the first part is great. So light breaking through. Well, no, through through is not a very strong word. Light. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, through doesn't have a lot of meaning. So that might be a wasted downbeat there, if that makes sense. Uh, I think now we're getting into red cars are really cool, really cool. Yeah, I think that works for Neil. Uh, cool. Oh, Jen has, why can't we just be friends? So why and just don't hold a lot of meaning there. Um, so any questions on what we're doing on this? I know we, we went through a lot of them, but do you see how that stress can make a difference? Pierre's yours was like golden as an example. So thank you. <laughs> um, uh, Jay has stars falling, stars falling from the sky from is a preposition. Um, Shelly says one word per beat. Yeah, for, I mean, for this example, um, I, I mean, not necessarily one word, but one syllable per beat, Shelly. So it could be multiple, multiple syllables, if that makes sense. So like, for instance, this multiply, remember in our our example before we said strong, weak, strong for multiply. So it'd be multiply. Um, let's see if you, if you, if you said it wrong, it would be, uh, dun, dun, uh, that melody doesn't work with it, but multiply would work with the multiply strong, weak, strong, if that makes sense. Cool. Should we move on to the next one? So here is a new melody. And I have no idea if the computer wrote this out correctly. So again, go by what your ear is telling you more so than what's actually on the page, especially for um, <laughs> Umar has go forth and multiply. Yes, that would be that would be right. Oh, J-Rock, did you have your hand raised? I think I missed that. Yeah, but um, it's just a. Uh, uh, is this like stress syllable thing? Like one on the one and the three. Okay, is this like based on genres, or is this just kind of all songwriting? Um, it would be all genres because um, what we're well anything that's in four four time. Um, so so if we go back to this, so we have. If you remember correctly, each bar has four beats. Um, so if we're doing, so this is, it'd be one, two, three, four. So it's strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, right? And that would apply to any genre. It would be, that's the way four, four just works rhythmically. So it would, it would apply to any genre. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. So listen to this melody, and now let's try to write some lyrics to this. So this one, if you look at the music, it's not starting right on a downbeat. So this has a different, um, this has a different feel to it. So what what can you come up with with this one?
Whoops. Played a couple more times here. How we doing? Do you want to hear it more or? I see some people are putting things in the chat. So this one's a little bit more complicated. So the melody is da 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 da. Da 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 da. So let's see what Jen wrote. We are the... <laughs> Looks like you have more syllables, Jen. Because it would be da 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 da. We are the last. We, we are the. We are the last. Oh. I'm not exactly sure how that fits to the da 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 da. Um, Jay's is red eyes and tears. Red eyes and tears become him. Red eyes and tears. Red eyes and tears become him. That was great, Jay. That's great. Um, cause the, the actual strong beat, the strong beats in this first section are the second note. And then this last, um, this note that kind of starts behind the beat. Um, Adam, you have your hand raised. Chad, I don't think that what we see there is what we heard. Um, you're singing, because I know I can see, you know, it's funny, I didn't look at the notation. That notation doesn't match what we heard. Here's the there's, there's, Yeah, go ahead. Da 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 da. Da, da, uh, da, I'm, hearing, da. I'm hearing that note. <laughs> that ex I wasn't looking at the notation. I'm hearing that. Da, 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 but that's a chord. That's not yeah. a melody note. I'm hearing that as a melt. I mean, but it's pretty prominent. What you so, see there on the notation is bum 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 bum. Yeah, bum 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 bum. Yeah. yeah. So the so the chord. So yeah, maybe you yeah. guys are hearing. Yeah, the chord. I'm hearing a melody on that on that F. And then, ba, ba, boom, boom, boom. yeah, and then the same thing the second time around. Yep. 
So, so would anybody... Jens be, we yeah. are the last hope. Uh, tonight we are. The... I don't know if Jens still fits there. So Jeanette, you have you have no idea. Oh my heart, it's breaking. You the nana. You have no uh da 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 da. Have yeah, I don't know if that fits. Neil has I'm leaving without you, I'm leaving without you knowing. Yeah, so a lot of these look like you do have you guys have extra syllables so maybe people weren't hearing the and i don't know maybe zoom it maybe it comes through differently than what i'm hearing it so i apologize for that um da, da, da. that just goes to show how strong that downbeat is that that note's jumping yeah. right out on that f every time although so it you, is on the weak measure so you're <laughs> so you're hearing so you're hearing this f note is that what you're saying adam whatever was voiced I don't know what that note is. Oh, the dun dun. dun okay. No, dun 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 dun. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. yeah I'm, so hearing the melody... eight, I'm hearing those two eight. So that tied, I'm not hearing um, that that tied eighth note. I'm not hearing. I'm hearing another note though on the F. So got that, it. The, the rhythm is correct in terms of what. If you take away the tie, the rhythm is correct in terms of what um, I'm hearing at least. But I get it. Yeah, I should have looked at the notation. <laughs> Um, but Umar has the sun is up. T -t -t -t. I think there might be an extra. Dun -dun now is the time, to, or it's time for new beginnings. I think there might be an extra syllable in there. Um, I think it was like uh, the sun is up. Dun -dun. It's time for new beginnings. Oh, I wasn't sure about the beginning. New... So... Oh, it... the sun is up. It's time for new beginning. It's time yeah. for new. Yeah, that works. I miss okay. it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Cool. Uh, JP has so long for now. Farewell, friend. So there's extra syllables there, too, I think. Pierre, da, 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 da. yeah, maybe this one wasn't a good example. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I see other people are saying it's. Um, let me play it again. So see if you can see where the the melody is. But but you guys are, you guys understand the concept, right? Like it. And honestly, if you're hearing it a different way, and what you're singing works with what you're hearing, perfect. Because Zoom is weird too, so I, it wouldn't surprise me if it's adding sound. Uh, J Rock, you have your hand raised. Um, yeah. So, uh, if I'm getting this right, like there's a chord progression going on, and then there's a melody on top of that. That's what we're hearing. Yes. Yes. Okay. Correct. All right. I I think that um, well, I definitely just wrote to both the chord progression and the melody without having any uh, consideration about the the separation of those two things. Um, maybe that's why there's uh, extra syllables with people. Yeah, no, I think that I think that's right. Um, and yeah, so this this song does have a chord progression that has a melody on it. I think the next one does too. So the next one would sound like. So do you hear? Does that make sense? Do you hear the dun dun dun? What we see is what we heard. What? Yeah, what we see is what we heard, definitely. Okay. So well, let's. Just, oh, but we're just supposed to write to the melody, not the chord progression. Correct. So we're paying attention to the melody, but a lot of times when you are top lining, you may have a chord progression that's under the melody that you're singing or the melody that you're playing. So being able to hear the melody, I think, is a good skill as well. And, and, Partly, I think the issue is the melodies being played in the same instrument as the chords were. Everything was piano. I knew the difference, but I think the way that it comes through is is incorrect. So I that 
just chalk that up to a learning experience for me and and that's a that was a trick question guys <laughs> if that works but i think you guys are you're getting the concept which i think is great uh, jay you have your hand raised uh so just out of curiosity since the melody is so pronounced would the chord progression which i would presume would be the harmony uh would that not be distinguished uh if we were to look at that as two different uh entities um, I guess I don't know what you mean by distinguish. Like, do they work separately from each other? Or well, what so mean? what I'm essentially what I'm saying is that since it's uh lower, since the chords are lower, and uh, since they're chords more harmonic, would we not want to be focused on the melody since it's more pronounced and forward for this exercise? Or yeah, the the exercise is to use the melody, correct? So you should be focused on the the top line melody. Um, so let's try it. Let's try it with this one. This one's a little bit more of a syncopated type thing too, but maybe let's see how you guys hear this one. So do you hear that that da 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 that's the melody
Do you want me to keep playing it a couple more times? Oops. Should I play it a couple more times or how are you guys how are you guys doing? God, one more time, maybe. <laughs> okay. One more. Oh, okay. Cool. So let's go to the chat. Um, Oh, some people were saying they had to go. I thought those those were lyrics. <laughs> they, I thought, okay, awesome. <laughs> I thought they were typing that those were the lyrics, but they were just saying that they had to leave the the workshop. That's fine. <laughs> awesome. Um, so Suzanne has here. I am waiting for you to come back home. Here I am waiting. Wait, wait, yeah, waiting for you to come back home. Um, yeah, I think that works. Here I am waiting for you to come back home. Uh, Jeanette has breathe with me, feel me, so we can dance to tonight. So tonight. On the quarter notes like that sounds a little bit wonky because we we say tonight right so we're going weak strong whereas this is strong weak so tonight sounds sounds a little bit off but you could i mean if you change the rhythm it would be tonight um but that's really great jeanette um jp has uh get together no nah. Let me see how this goes. Back. I think get together now. Is that how you were? That that might not be the that syllable in together. I don't think works quite as good. Get together there now because that's a strong stronger beat right there um as the downbeat so that might be kind of set a little bit goofy um umar says take your time relax i think relax is that's another example of um going from the way we pronounce relax is weak strong and this is strong weak so relax sounds a little bit odd to me so you have take your time relax and take a break relax relax sounds like a laxative doesn't it like a laxative commercial <laughs> take your time with relax <laughs> um i'm not picking on you more i'm just trying to be funny um uh let's see sheila has it's hard when you're it's hard when you're kissing can leave something missing. It's hard when you're kissing can leave something missing. Yeah, I think that works. Uh, Neil has, I can eat French fries and you can eat hamburgs. <laughs> there you go. Um, Asher has, when will I decide that I cannot be right? So I think decide, again, sounds like a little bit, that's that strong, weak thing again, where it's like, when will I decide? We pronounce it more as decide, I think, more so than decide, if that makes sense. Um, Shelly has, my dog hates snacking. 
and he won't chase rabbits. Awesome. Yep, that's good. So Pierre, why did you, why did you lie? I think, do you have an extra syllable there? Why'd you lie to me? Oh, why? Okay, sorry. Why'd you? Why'd you? Yeah. Why'd, you? Yeah. why'd you lie to me? That's, That's it. it. We're done. Last That's straw. Okay. That's it. We're done. Last straw. Okay, that works. Sorry, I was literally, my mind was reading at why did you lie to me? Weird. <laughs> um, Dale has tears in tears in my tears in my eyes tears yeah, in I was my trying to extend the eyes like tears in my eyes but then i did the tonight thing that somebody else did got it okay tears in my eyes so yeah you can do that you can do that as like a uh, i think they call it a melisma where you have a uh, one syllable word that's sung on on multiple syllables you can definitely uh, do that for sure whoops yeah, that makes sense. Thanks for pointing that out, Dale. Uh, Jay has boats moved through Holland toward the Netherland canals. <laughs> sure, Amsterdam's heaven. Awesome. Heaven. Heaven. Yeah, that works. Hold my hand. Let me know that you know that you know that you always love me i think that works j-rock uh adam says santa cruz sunsets are foggy all summer that works cool awesome so that's kind of what i had for you guys tonight as far as exercises and things do you feel this as being helpful for you or what are some of the things that you learned or or picked up on tonight and feel free to raise your hand or or put it in the chat kind of how you how you how you see this how this how you may see how this might help you um j-rock oh uh well first of all it's definitely helpful it's a little bit of a workout that, you know, I, um, you know, cause like, I guess, uh, you know, it's, it's things that you may do. People probably do naturally, like how we naturally speak and how you naturally sing, but then to actually think about it and work out the details of it to actually make it work. Um, yeah. So that's, that's an interesting process. Um, my question was just about, uh, like, we can skip notes too, right? Or the melody is the melody and you got to match it. Or, or I mean, like, because, you know, when you're, if you just got a chord progression, you're coming up with a melody you could skip. Yeah. Yeah. I think when you're actually writing, right, like, you're not necessarily going to have a melody that you can't change right a lot of times you're going to be able to change the melody unless you're working with a co-writer that says this is the melody you have to write to it right which yeah. could happen especially if you're in a situation where you're writing to a spec or like you're writing something um but no as you're writing a lot of times you may have your own melody that you're like that is a kick butt melody right like i just love love that melody so then you would want to fit lyrics to that if that makes sense okay i got that so like let's say you have your melody and in like verse you know in some uh phrases you got all these notes but then in the second phrase you don't have all those notes maybe you skipping notes or because you want you know oh, does, does that work yeah, I mean, it, it really comes down to what you, you know, want to do for your own song, for sure. And I don't know if, did we lose him? Lose J-Rock? <laughs> Pro's up there. Uh, Pierre, oh, did you have something you wanted to add? No, I guess, uh, yeah, I mean, I was just thinking we have some creative uh, uh, 
leeway, but um, I'm just kind of wondering, yeah, I don't want to break the rules unnecessarily. Like, you know what I mean? Like if it's supposed to be like the phrases of the melody need to be consistent, I understand that. Um, I guess it's just something to play around with, perhaps. I don't yeah. know. Or, or what, what are the rules, Chad? Yeah, these are all... So first thing is there really are no set rules. So like these are just examples of of ways that you can do it. But I think the idea is knowing that this is something that could be happening in your song, I think is the the important thing. Where, like you said, try different things, what works. If you're if you're saying like tonight right. instead, instead of, of tonight, tonight, you know that might be, you know, that might sound a little awkward. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Things to play around with for sure, Chad. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, Pierre. Yeah, I, I quite liked when you said our mission as songwriters is to preserve the uh, natural shape of language. And also at the beginning, playing those songs and just seeing the different opinions on those songs too. It was a good way to set the thing to say, you know, we're all writing songs. We're out there. Some people are going to like it. Some people aren't going to like it. But at the end, you toy around, you play around. But the, I like the... the um, the way you identify the different parts of speech too, and then articles and that, that those, those throwaway words that you don't need, you know, that will affect your, your song when you say, yeah, the, you don't need it, uh, this, you know, like those little words. I like that, that point to, to put the stress on the things that actually are going to get your message across. So no real questions, just comments again, like, thank you very much, but mission, yeah. preserve that natural shape as, as best you can, but put it out there and somebody might like it. Somebody won't. There you go. <laughs> exactly. Thanks, Pierre. Uh, Jeanette. Yeah, I mean, it definitely is something where you have to pull a rabbit out of the hat and try to figure out what words fit. Uh, it's definitely opened my eyes and mind. Um, also, I don't know if you've heard this, but um, maybe I did watch it from your play playlist, but they said something about Yoda talk. Like sometimes you don't want to make it sound too wordy. So you try oh. to be as brief as possible. And that sort of helped me come back to it and remind myself, like, oh, make it short and simple. Yeah. And then I think uh, it's, it definitely has helped me with the stress and the unstressed syllables. Like, it was, it was it, at first, it was like, it put me on the spot. And then it, it, I, I get it now. I think I got it. And, and that's okay if I don't get it the next time. But I think it's definitely helped me open my eyes. Yeah, no, the Yoda speak thing, Adam just put something in the chat. He said, talking about passive speak, you are, or happy I am, instead of saying I am happy, you know, we change the order of the words to sometimes force a rhyme or force a rhythm. And it becomes like we're we're like Yoda, because that's how Yoda, you know, how he speaks. <laughs> awesome. Anybody else want to share or anything else you all want to talk about? tonight from from either this topic or any other topics that you're you're working on lately jay hey man just wanted to just chime in and say real quick thanks so much uh for hosting these and every time even though i've gone over a topic it just gives me more and i really appreciate it even though you know you're squeezing things in with more youtube content and all of these other uh endeavors that you have you know your time management between work and this and your new content and the eight billion other bill gates level uh time management things you're doing uh <laughs> we really well i really appreciate it and i feel confident saying others do too so um thanks so much and uh, just hosting these oh you're welcome thanks jay um so next workshops or next things that we have coming up saturday i'm doing a live stream um with doyle turner which i think will be fun um, so that the link is in the, the meetup, uh, section or the meetup event. That'll be Saturday morning at 10. That'll be a live stream on YouTube again, which thank you for those of you who are tuning into YouTube. I know Jeanette, you've been asking some great questions and, and stuff. So it's great to see you guys show up. Um, and then there's still time to get your song in for the March songwriting challenge, which we'll be having our, um, song share coming up on April 1st. Um, if you can post your songs by um, a week from tomorrow on March 31st, then we can get them in that meeting and we'll play through all the songs that that people upload for the challenge. So um, and if you miss the the challenge, the uh, details 
<clears throat> are on the meetup page in the description of the um, of the event. So definitely, uh, Shelly says the challenge is tough. Yeah, I think challenge is the key word, Shelly. So um, it's all to help people learn, that's for sure. Um, Sheila says, just came across the group a couple of days ago and thank you for doing this. I really enjoyed it. Awesome. Thanks, Sheila. Thanks for, for coming and hopefully you can attend other workshops. And Neil, thanks for attending your first one as well. So yeah, so that'll probably wrap up tonight, but definitely if you haven't checked out the YouTube channel, it's at homesongwriting.com. Um, and then the meetup group, um, you can find it on meetup. Most of you are probably finding it there anyway. So look at the events and all the descriptions, but it was great to, to hang out with you guys and, and we'll see you all soon. Have a good night. Thanks, Bye, everybody. Jeff. Bye.